Good morning, everyone out there in TV land. This is Bobby Thompson reporting live from the lovely northern border in the great state of Maine. And let me tell you, folks, it is a beautiful day for a walk. And that is a very good thing because these young contestants are in for a long walk. A very long walk indeed. And we are going to be with them every step of the way. Isn't that right, Rich? It certainly is, Bobby. Ladies and gentlemen, sitting with me today is a man who needs no introduction, but I'm going to introduce him anyway. He is one of the few Long Walker champions still alive today. The always gruff, always great Richard Manuel. Thank you, Bob, but today isn't about me. Today is about these young athletes who are putting everything on the line. Yes, 100 young men from across the country, each one of them ready to take the ultimate risk for the ultimate prize. And you lucky people get to sit and watch from the comfort of your own home as you enjoy our pre-game analysis of The Long Walk. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've never seen a long walk before, you are in for, well, I don't want to say you're in for a treat, but you are about to witness a one-of-a-kind competition that will leave you breathless. And I see that all the walkers have arrived in the parking lot. Spectators are not allowed to be up close at the starting line, but we do have some telephoto lenses that will give us a little glimpse. Richard, would you do the honors and explain the rules for our folks at home? Of course. Just in case you've been living underneath a rock and you've never heard of the long walk before, there are 100 contestants, all of them male, all of them under 18. It is May 1st, and at precisely 9 a.m., these boys will begin walking down the road. An electronic device monitors their pace, and they must maintain a speed no slower than 4 miles per hour. The boys may bring food and other items along with them. Soldiers will provide food at the beginning of each morning. Canteens are also provided, and the walkers receive refills of water upon request. The walkers must not physically interfere with other contestants, so no pushing, shoving, poking, or tripping. During the walk, the Major and his soldiers will monitor competitors' progress. If a walker slows below 4 miles per hour, he receives his first warning. If he slows again, the soldiers issue a second warning, and if that happens again, the boy earns a final warning. After that, then the walker gets his ticket punched, as we call it. This means that he is eliminated from the competition. Of course, the good news is you can work off that warning by staying on pace for more than an hour. So even if you've received a couple warnings, you can get back on track by maintaining a four mile an hour speed. It all sounds very simple, of course. But there are a lot of surprises, a lot of things, a lot of things you don't expect. And speaking of expectations, who among this year's crop of walkers do you predict will win? <laughs> you ask me that every year, and every year I say the same thing. Well, refresh our memory, Rich. Who do you think's going to win? The kid who walks the farthest. <laughs> I love it. Well, Las Vegas has a more specific prediction. They are offering six to one odds that the winner will be number 85, Edwin Scram. I can see why Vegas would pick him as the favorite. He's big, long legs, most like a high school dropout, so he's not going to overthink any given situation. He's one of the older boys in this competition, and he's the only one who is married. Yes, and according to my notes, his wife is pregnant. So there's a lot of motivation to win this thing, but motivation only gets you so far. And I spy another favorite down in the parking lot. Looks like he's saying goodbye to his mother as we speak. That's Ray Garrity, not exactly an odds-on favorite. No, but he is our only walker from Maine. And that's where our competition begins, so you can bet the locals will be cheering him on. Until he crosses into New Hampshire. If he gets that far. Love from the fans can lift your spirits, but in my walk, there were two contenders from Maine, and as you know, they were outwalked by a West Coaster. Absolutely true. So, 
What type of competitor should we be looking out for? Like I said, it's always a surprise. It's anyone's walk. That's right, but if you look at the history of this event, I don't want to call it a sport, there are two types of people who typically win. There are those who walk for themselves and those who walk for others. Like Scram. Maybe. Maybe. They might be walking for a loved one who will be watching from the sidelines, but they might also be walking for someone who is a fellow competitor. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's no second place in this competition, so why would caring about your fellow walkers be an advantage instead of a disadvantage? Well, for example, look at 65 and 66. I believe that's the Motega brothers, Joseph and Michael. Native Americans from the Hopi Indian tribe. That's right, brothers. So they'll be looking out for each other, watching each other, urging each other on. And when one of them ultimately falters and ultimately fails, that could galvanize the survivor to keep walking. All right, so they care about each other, but you said there was another kind likely to succeed. It's the opposite personality, the loner, the watcher, the type of kid who would be delighted to see you fall on your face. The sort of person that looks forward to dancing on your grave, so to speak. Perhaps someone like number five, Gary Barkovich. That kid certainly has a Machiavellian look in his eyes. Perhaps. Or, well, look at the boy sitting up in the tree, eating a jelly sandwich. Number 88. Right now all the other boys are hugging their moms and dads, wasting a lot of energy with this emotional outpour. But number 88, I believe his name is Stebbins, if I'm not mistaken. He looks more relaxed, more certain, more perceptive. Of course, we'll find out soon enough. Looks like the Major has arrived. The boys will now line up, ten walkers and ten rows, and in just a few moments, the Major will give the signal, and the long walk will be underway. And we couldn't ask for a nicer day for it, folks. So please stay tuned so you can cheer these boys on. You'll be glad you did. Well, that was our pre-game show, folks. Next up, The Walk Begins.